Hey, pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports News. I'm Joe Bork, and this is going to be a quick breakdown of the AL Central, as we already did the two Western divisions of the AL West and NL West. Yesterday, I'll link those two videos at the end of this video if you want to check them out to see where we projected those divisions, um, and if they're similar to last year or differences. The AL Central coming into this season does still seem to have the White Sox as the favorite, but the Tigers made many great moves. The Guardians are taking a step back. Mm -hmm. The Royals might take a step up and put the Guardians in last place, and then the Twins still have a good lineup, but leave a bit to be desired pitching-wise, but did add Joe Ryan, who is going to be a nice addition for them. But let's start with who seems like to be the last place team because they just give off the signs of rebuilding, uh, which is the Guardians. Uh, which is still getting used to saying the new name, uh, but the Cleveland Guardians, they're a team, they have some okay young pitchers, obviously Shane Beaver's a stud, Aaron Savali's really good, uh, so you have those studs there, Plesak's good as well, but you would want Zach Plesak to be more the couple years ago, Zach Plesak, and not last year's, and then you're really set, and then you got <clears throat> a guy like Hedges, you got a guy like Logan Allen, you got guys like Eli Morgan, how are they going to fit in? Cal Quantrill was solid once going there, but <clears throat> how is he going to fit into the starting rotation? Excuse me. So Austin Hedges, though, I do think is really going to help that team because he might not be one of the best catchers that wows you doing anything in terms of, of just blowing your uh, eyes out or anything of that nature, but he is a great catcher at calling the game, and Chris Rose had him on the Rose rotation at just how good he is at kind of keeping pitchers calm, and he talked about that a good bit, and he's actually going to be a new member of that rotation, so it's going to be fun to watch him on there as well. But I think for the Guardians, their team, they showed that they signed Jose, so they show they're going to try to rebuild this quickly because they have some good guys. From Reyes is a solid player. Um, you have <clears throat> uh, that Quan kid. Um, if he can come in and uh, play very well, a smaller kid at five nine, but can hit. So uh, you got to see what happens there with Jimenez. You got to see what happened there with Owen Miller. Can he be a late bloomer? How about Clement? How about Chang? Can those guys be late bloomers? Because if you get late bloomers, that really helps you. And same goes with Bobby Bradley. Uh, will he start emerging more? But the Guardians, to me, are a last place team that are still going to have some guys that are fun to watch. The Kansas City Royals, then, I would say. They're going to be battling it out for third with the Minnesota Twins. I think the Royals honestly do have the ability to be that solid because they made good additions, and their young pitching, I think, is really solid because Brad Keller, I think, is underrated. Jackson Kowar isn't what he is yet. And then Chris Bubick, I think, is going to be a really solid pitcher for them. For them, the bigger concern, and also Granke having a, that him back at the top of the rotation is a good veteran for these young guys, too. Lynch is good as well. Brady Singer is going to be back. So... I think the bigger concern for them is how the pen's going to shake out compared to the rotation, which I think actually will be fine. Uh, catching wise, Salvador Perez is a stud, so they don't have to worry about that. And then in the infield, you got Witt Jr., who already had a great game in his first. Uh, Ahern, Mondesi, Santana, Murrayfield, Lopez, Dozier. They got a lot to pick from. You got Benatendi, Isbell, Oz Olivares, and Michael A. Taylor. So it really depends on how Isbell and Olivares do. If those guys do great. <clears throat> then the Royals could really project themselves up to a playoff team and kind of switch places there. And uh, th th that would be great for them if they're able to do that and kind of switch places with the Twins and be in third place. But coming in, I would have them in fourth with the Twins then getting the kind of just by default nod because I think the Tigers, with how much they improve, have to be at least respected to be in the top two coming into the season. And then the White Sox already did it, so they obviously get that respect, and they didn't get any worse, and they potentially did get better, so, but we'll get to that in a minute. The Minnesota Twins, though, they're a team that's going to be very interesting, because the Royals, I think, have a more well-rounded team, meaning their hitting's great, and their pitching has the chance to be great. The Twins leave a lot to be desired, pitching-wise, because it's not like they have young guys that are still improving, other than um, Joe Ryan, who's really young still and in his mid-20s and just came in and they traded for from another organization to see what he's able to do and then you have to see what Winder's able to do but he's not proven Dylan Bundy he's not going to do anything uh if in life if he, if he pitches like he did last year so he's gonna have to pitch like he did two years ago and then Chris Archer's a question mark so the twins Sonny Gray also would have to pitch like he did a couple years ago adding Chris Paddock is a good addition hopefully a change of scenery will get him back to the Paddock of all in the start of his career, but that remains to be seen. So they have a lot of ifs in that pitch rotation where 
That's why I think the Royals have a chance to jump them. It's going to be a really big battle for which one of those two teams have a chance to be a playoff team. But the Twins lineup is going to bash. They got Gary Sanchez. They added Carlos Correa. Nick Gordon is still developing, in my opinion. Polanco, Sano, Yershela, uh, Buxton, uh, Kepler, Kirillov. I mean, their, their, line, their lineup ma matches, and then Celestino uh, is obviously continuing to develop the Dominican Republic kid. So... I think they're going to match lineup-wise, and that's how the Twins made the playoffs a couple years ago. That's not necessarily the easiest road to the playoffs. So it's going to be interesting to see what they're able to do since the Royals, in my mind, have the better complete team, including defense potentially as well, where the Twins don't necessarily have that, but the Twins have the leg up on the lineup, in my opinion, to the Kansas City Royals, and that's why they're in third compared to fourth. And then the Guardians, again, that's just because they're rebuilding. And then the rounded out, the Tigers... For me, Orange second, and that's just because the White Sox already been there, done that. They proved it, and they to me, they didn't get any worse, so they deserve the respect to stay in first. The Tigers deserve the respect to move up to second because they recognize that they were a team that was on the precipice with how they were kind of a roller coaster team last year, but showed promise in moments that they're a team that even more so than the Royals has young pitching that's probably this year ready to emerge, or the Royals might be this is the year they're ready to show what, like, Scooble did last year and then emerge the following year type deal where it seems like the Tigers with, um, or to show what, not Scooble, what, like, Casey Mize did last year and then emerge the following year, I should say. Um, but the Tigers, they got Casey Mize, they got Matt Manning, they got a lot of young pitchers, uh, they got Tarek Scooble, um, as well, aforementioned, and he's going to be able to continue to develop and be well. They also got Rodriguez, so I, I think the fact that the great young pitching the Tigers have might be one of the more underrated um, rotations in baseball if they all have a solid season, or even three of the five have a solid season. Catching, similarly <clears throat> to the Guardians, but they're also, it, it, it has a little bit more merit for the Tigers due to the fact that they're going to be a contending team. Tucker Barnard is one of the best receivers of the ball and at managing a pitching staff. Uh, and then Dustin Garneau also is as a backup. And then Eric Haas, he's more of a hitting catcher, but uh, he's not bad either. Javier Baez, Miguel Cabrera, Condelario, Castro, Scope, and Torkelson is, of course, their infield. Spencer Torkelson is the, the talk of the entire um, season. What's he going to be able to do? I think he's going to be a stud of a hitter. And not one of those just home run first baseman. It's more Goldschmidt first baseman that can do it all, hit home runs, hit gaps, uh, hit doubles, and all that, and also has a little bit of uh, ability to run similar to Goldschmidt, so that's why that seems like a decent comparable, because for his size, he's not slow. Uh, Victor Reyes, Meadows, Grossman, and Badu in the outfit. It's really going to be interesting to see what Badu is able to continue to do, being a Rule 5 selection last year, coming in, doing well. Hopefully, he continues to have success. But the Tigers, for me, are in second, and it's simply just because the White Sox, as I said, didn't get any worse. The right Sox already proved it. Is Tony La Russa necessarily a manager for the current age? I still don't know that, but it doesn't matter because their lineup is sick. Their pitching is very good. Uh, I think Matt Foster still has the ability to be a very good reliever. Dukas Giolito is a stud. Dallas Keiko, I think, will be good enough this year. Then you got Kopech, you got Lopez. Um, Vince Velasquez, who knows what he's going to do for you. Um, but uh, the, the, overall, this team is pretty good, and I still think Dylan Cease, because yes, does he let some guys get on base? Yes, but he does get out of jams. He's one of those kind of old school, doesn't look sexy by the analytics, but when you watch him, he pitches fine and keeps you in games as a 4-5 or five guy. So I think he's kind of one of those underrated commodity pitchers to have in your rotation that can just eat up innings for you, so to speak. And their outfield also got better, adding in A.J. Pollock, who, as long as he can stay healthy, is a heck of a hitter. Engel's a great fielder. Otherwise, they have good hitters in Jimenez, Pollock, and Robert, and then Garcia, who's a very good contact hitter in the right outfield with the fantastic fielder and runner of uh, Adam Engel. Gavin Sheets and Vaughn then can be their designated hitter slash guys that can go to the outfield for Vaughn and uh, Sheets first base sometimes. So I think this lineup's going to match. I think the White Sox have the pitching. I do think what they're probably going to add <clears throat> is probably one starter, though, at the deadline because unless if some – the 30-year-old Tanner Banks emerges, you have Dylan Cease takes a step up or something like that, or you really have Kopech and Lopez pitch fantastic this year. It seems like that might be what they need because I don't think Vince Velasquez at this point of his career is going to really make it as a starter, but we'll have to see. But that is the end of this AL Central video as we have the White Sox, Tigers, Twins, Royals, and Guardians 
in that order as the projection for the AL Central. Have a great day, pleasant day, everybody. Please make subscribe down below or above on the easy to use widget to keep the channel mm -hmm. growing to 250 or more by the end of April. Really appreciate your guys' love and support.